Now, thank you for staying with us. It's still Plus Politics. Now, we are back to analyze the issues that have been shaping the country since uh, the beginning of the year. Um, and now we have in the studio joining us uh, AVM Femi Badebo. He is a security expert. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. And we still have in the studio Bola Oba, political analyst. Now, Bola, before we went on the break, we said when we come back, we're going to be looking at the solutions. But we'll leave that first and come to one of the burning issues that we have faced in 2019, which is insecurity at different levels. And they have come in different shapes and you know, different, under different names. We've had the herders and the farm, uh, farmers clashes. We've had Boko Haram. We now have ISWAP. We've had kidnapping, which was a serious madness. Cultism in the South, South and the Southeast. All kinds of things. I mean, it looked like at some point in the middle of this year, we had our plate so filled up that we did not know where to pick from. As a security analyst looking from the outside in, where do you think we got this all wrong and why does it keep coming out like a hydra-headed monster? It's politics, do or die politics. Um, you have the build-up to the elections. You remember that the customs seized hordes of, you know, arms that were being imported, but we never got to know what happened to them. Or I always ask that question, the whatever you cannot happened. Ship a container load of arms or goods and they arrive at the ports, you seize them and you cannot walk backwards to find out where they were shipped from or whoever the beneficiary was supposed to be. And then you, you found that, I'll not mention names, some governors when they had lost, I mean after they left office, suddenly we are re returning large quantities of arms Oh, yes, we can name names because police. it's an issue, of course. You know? uh, he's now in the Senate. Yes. And, and where did and that no story go? And no questions are being asked as to where did they come from, who gave permit and all that. Um, I think we, if we go back, you'll see that with each election, proliferation of arms becomes bigger and bigger because what... Even though there were campaigns before the elections about not allowing your children or yourselves as individuals to be used by so-called rich people and so on, the truth is that when you impoverish a people, then you have, whether it's area boys or whatever, they are even waiting for those opportunities to be used. And they'll collect arms, they'll collect money, they'll do what the, uh, the payer you know, demands of them, trade chaos and all that. But immediately the election finishes, what do you find? They're no longer required. And there's no way you can mop up those weapons that have been released. So I'm actually quite happy that uh, there's more stability now than we had after previous elections. We used to have a lot of, uh, you, you know, gangs and all kinds of things happening. The kidnappings, you'd find that Kaduna, Abuja is one of the major areas. In fact, the demand on the, on the train now is so much because most people are not even prepared to go by road anymore, Abuja Kaduna. But if you look generally around the country, there is a relative calm compared to what one would have expected after the elections. Interesting. Uh, well, uh, as an analyst, with all of this, he said that is do or die politics. Because there have been several people who have said that politicians in the highest of places have had a hand in all of the insecurities that we have experienced in the country so far. We've had the likes of T.Y. Danjuma speak about issues. We've had all kinds of people speak. Um, I think it's, it's a save, that's his name. He said something about uh, the insecurity in the country also. Why do you think that politicians would want to destabilize the country? I mean, I'm trying to understand how it would best serve them. How it best serves them? Yeah, because if, they, if this, this, this analogy that the politicians have a hand in insecurity, what exactly are they trying to prove? It's the only game in town. <laughs> it's the only business in town. This is a this is a market. I'm choosing my words carefully. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying a polity. Mm -hmm. This is a market where the most prosperous business is the business of being a politician in office. 
All you have to do today to become a billionaire is to be named, say, a finance commissioner, a works commissioner, or be elected as a governor. Are you insinuating that politics is now more like a, a, a milking machine of sorts for anyone and everyone? So come on, come on, come on. It's a, a cake that we all have to eat from. Even the scent that some of us campaigned for in 2014, 2015, that we were telling people had no foreign account, had no oil rig, had no... You know, the son of the saint conveniently was riding a bike of millions of naira. Oh, what a saintly... You understand what I'm saying? He's the only game in town when it comes to, when it comes to business. How did we arrive at this point where this is the only game in town? Everybody, it's more like the only other option for you to stay up there or be anybody you have to be part of the politics. Is, is, how do we get there? My wife became the vice chairman of a local government. I still check my, my Facebook account. That has been the day more people greeted me because my wife became <laughs> the vice chairman of a local government in Lagos. The day more people greeted me in the history of my we are all crazy together. We get the kind of government we deserve. I don't know my wife's office. And somebody was actually lambasting me. You can't leave her. They said, you, you, you. Just look at vice chairman, look at government. And more people greeted me on Facebook. Oh, congratulations, congratulations. And I was, and I was thinking... Does that not show that we have deteriorated or degenerated, I'm trying to choose my words right here, to a, a very debased level where anything goes? I am very sure that if any governor names you today as the CPS, oh, no, I, I know. I'm just saying, I'm no. sure. I never take those things. If any governor names you, even before you reject it, you will find it difficult to come out of your of your house that day, because some people will be waiting. Your ex-friend, your old schoolmates, that is how, you see how degenerate we've become. And so, let's be very honest with ourselves. What, the people in politics, are they from Venus or from Mars? Unfortunately, let me come back to you, Mr. Degu um, um <laughs> Mr. Wadibo. <laughs> let's talk about the welfare of servicemen whether they're police officers, whether they're soldiers, whether they're naval officers, Air Force, these people put their lives on the line to protect our borders within and without. And also in this same year, in fact, at the close of last year into this same year, we've heard of soldiers complaining about, you know, them not being properly armed, though their welfare, monies have been disappearing that should get to them. How do we get people to protect us if they themselves don't feel protected or taken care of? Well, over the years, um, rot has crept into the system. And so, the case of Nigeria is not about budgeting. Mm -hmm. It's not about providing, making funds available. It's about making sure they get down the line where they should get to. And um, the last couple of years when we were having this delayed budgeting, it also created a situation where money was not available as at when it should be. And so let's say soldiers are supposed to be on patrol or policemen are supposed to be mopole and all that. There's an amount they're supposed to get every day. And the bureaucracy keeps the thing on for so long. And people have become used to, well, you'll be paid at the end of the month. So at the end of the month, the money comes out. And, but the reality is that from the first day of the month to the last day, how are these people surviving on the streets? It's touching. You, you understand? And then you have situations where some commanders will lean on the governor or local government chairman because the money has not come from the center. And so those ones too would help out. And then by the time the money comes from the center, there's always a little bit of a problem as to it comes in bulk. 
And so what we've ended up seeing is criminal elements at the top of the system, you know, finance officers uh, advising or colluding with the man in charge to e explain how they could divert stuff. So you find um, there's, and then when the, when the soldiers see some of these things, we saw what happened in Jaji the other time. Somebody was shipping hundreds of millions of naira. And the soldiers, of course, knowing what was in there, also decided to pounce in on it and, and disappear with some of the money. Okay? So the problem is, let's create a situation where money is available as it went due. In fact, in the past, we had what was called compo rations, that is prepackaged foods, mm -hmm. including gari or egusi soup and beans and all that. They were in can, like the imported corned beef, mm -hmm. provided by Raju Jobi Fela or something, one Nigerian company. And if you are going to be out for five days, you would get the breakfast, lunch, dinner packages. And so you could actually just sit somewhere under your bush, open it up, and at least feed something. But later on, we started all this issue of saying, okay, they will be paid later. That's where the problem came. In closing, because my producers are saying we have to go, I'm going to give you each 10 seconds. Going forward, the year is wrapped, literally. We, in a few weeks, we're going to say Happy New Year. What do we need to change as the year opens so we don't make the same mistakes in 2019 going forward? Especially the fact that Nigerians are tired. I'm sure that you are tired. You are tired. Okay. I am tired. I'm not tired. <laughs> I'm not tired. In a, oh, so you enjoy what we're going through? No, no, I'm not enjoying it. Ten seconds. Uh, I'm not tired. To be honest with you, I just believe that we have a generational challenge. Some of us who have gotten it, we have a generational challenge to be far more inventive. Because it is still a land of opportunity. Yes, it is. I, you know, I was in England this time last year, and I was telling a group of Nigerians that, you know what? To change it, you cannot only complain. And I was shocked. By January, 70 people decided to start a cooperative. I registered a cooperative, and they joined the cooperative in January. And from January till date, they have been diligently contributing monies for mass housing development your in ten, Nigeria. Your 10 seconds is about to so, be over. Uh, people, some people will, will have to change it. Okay, all right. Well, for, only for, political leadership. For a long time, as far as you can remember, uh, we've never had our budget passed before middle of the, of the year. And here we well, have it passed in December. Mm -hmm. What this pr provides the possibility to begin to release funds as that went due. And hopefully if it is done and the right policing measures put in place, as you can see now money is going directly to the local government, let the policing agencies or what they call monetary agencies do their job. I think uh, there is hope. Well, I want to thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Walaba, political analyst, and uh, uh, AVM Femi Badibo, uh, thank you very much for being here. He's a security expert. It's been a very interesting conversation. I wish we could go on and on, but we have to go. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, I will be giving you my take. Stay with us. The coalition called from several civil society groups had converged on the National Human Rights Commission in Abuja. Chanting songs of solidarity, they said their intent is to urge the federal government to free all detained political prisoners, including the convener of the Revolution Now movement, Omoyele Sori. They also say their protest condemns the invasion of the Federal High Court in Abuja by personnel of the Department of State Services, DSS, in their attempt to rearrest Mr. Showery after he was granted bail. This rally is taking place in Abuja and in Lagos. In January, in early January, we are going to continue if those demands are not met. We are going to continue and we are going to expand beyond Lagos and Abuja. We are going to include three other cities. And that's the way we are going to be escalating these freedom rallies. We have termed them freedom rallies. Until those demands are held, or are, 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 are met, or something gives. These are the fundamental demands that we are making and that we are tired of corruption. Because corruption is the seed of the reason why they are doing what they are doing. And we are saying that the president has committed himself and committed to the nation that he is going to fight corruption. And that corruption is still going on. 
despite the effort of EFCC, ICPC, they are doing their best, but some people in Gambia are undermining this institution. And we are saying that we cannot continue this way. Secondly, our country has been exposed to the most ridiculous political space in the, in the world. Everybody is seeing what is going on. For security, for security people to enter court, it has never happened in the history of Nigeria. And it has never happened in the history of any African country. Receiving them, a representative from the National Human Rights Commission urged them to remain peaceful. All I need is to urge you now to continue your protest, but in a very peaceful matter, manner. Do this, it is your right, and we will continue to pursue the rights of all the citizens of Nigeria. This one we are assuring you. you. Your complaints, like we have uh, now outlined, we will take them to the appropriate authority. However, a drama ensued as another group protesting in support of government appeared on a scene and a violent clash followed. <laughs> What has happened today is that we have seen some young jobless boys who are victims of the state. Themselves, they are victims of the state. You can see that they are smoking, uh, smoking, uh, smoking, they are on drugs. They came to beat us physically. As I speak to you now, some of our colleagues, we don't know their fate because they've chased them. And this happened in front of the security. Nobody, nobody asks anybody to, 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 to be violent or to be brutal against any other person because the other people are doing what what the other people are doing. They are doing it because it is it is inscribed in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that every Nigerian has a right to protest either for or against. Ours is here to solidarize with the government of President Mahmoud Nobody nobody harassed anybody. It was because they started insulting. The people that we came together, that was the reason why some of them started agitating. That why will they be sorting them because they are equally Nigerians. The police, which had refused to intervene, finally tried to restore law and order after much persuasion from the press. Amadin Uyi, Plus TV Africa. It's time for my take. Now, 2019 has been an interesting year, from pre-elections to election day, post-election drama, tribunals, protests, media trials, court trials, even injunctions. Those that were flouted and those that were obeyed, all of this, in all of this, many lives have been lost. A woman was burned alive in Kogi during an election. A copper was shot dead during a protest. A policeman died too. And a protest, that's another protest, a, a child was shot, caught in the crossfire. Haven't we lost enough people, so much so that we can get our acts right? I mean, how many more people have to die for us to demand and ensure good governance in this country? I mean, we can't keep making the same mistakes year in, year out. It's time for us to do the needful. And this also goes to politicians, to governors, to presidents. The, 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 the deed has to be done, and we the people, has to be part of the process. Like one of my guests said, we, f we must have good governance, we must have good followers. No one can change our Nigeria for us except we do it ourselves. I am Mary Anakal, it's been Plus Politics. <laughs>